Evaluating truth. We will learn to evaluate truth through an example. Let P, Q, and R be propositional variables with P and Q true and R false. Compute the truth value of not P or not Q implies R. We will go over how to solve this several different ways. Let's start with a truth table solution. In this solution, we're going to generate the whole truth table for this compound statement. Since there are three propositional variables, P, Q, and R, we will need three columns, one for P, one for Q, and one for R to start. There will be two to the three equals two times two times two or eight rows. For the first column corresponding to P, we put four T's followed by four F's. For the column corresponding to Q, we alternate two T's, two F's, two T's, two F's. And then for the column corresponding to R, we alternate T, F, T, F, T, F, T, F. That generates all possible truth assignments for the propositional variables. We now need a column corresponding to each substatement that appears in the given statement. So we'll need a column for not P, for not Q, for not Q implies R, and finally the whole statement itself, not P or not Q implies R. To get the truth values for the column corresponding to not P, we take the opposite truth values from the column corresponding to P. So the four T's become four F's and the four F's become four T's. We do something similar for the column corresponding to not Q. The TT becomes FF, FF becomes TT, TT becomes FF and FF becomes TT. For the column corresponding to not Q implies R, we look at the columns for not Q and for R and we apply the implication. Now the implication is false only when not Q is true and R is false. That happens in rows four and eight. Everywhere else, the result will be true. Finally, we apply the disjunction to the columns corresponding to not P and not Q implies R. So whenever either of those columns has a T in it, the result is T and the result is only F when both are F and that happens only in row four. Okay, so we've now generated the entire truth table for the given compound statement. And the second row corresponds to P and Q being true and R being false. And we see that the result is T because that is what is in the final column of the second row. Now the truth table solution provides a lot more information than was actually required to answer the question. This alternate solution will be a little more streamlined. So starting with not P or not Q implies R, we're simply going to replace each propositional variable by the truth value that they're assigned. P and Q will be replaced by T's and R by F to get not T or not T implies F. We now apply the negation first, because remember without parentheses, negations always take precedence. So the negation of true is false. So we can replace those not T's by F's to get F or F implies F. We now apply the implication F implies F is T. So we get F or T. And finally applying the disjunction, we see that F or T is T. Now I'll mention that we don't really need to write out that initial step. 
we could skip that and go right to F or F implies F by simply observing that the negation of true is F right away without actually writing that extra step out. This just saves a little bit of time and a little bit of writing. Let's look at a quicker method. We observe that we actually don't need to substitute all those truth values. In fact, the truth value of this compound statement is determined by the fact that Q is true. So in this case, not Q is false. And using the truth table for the implication, we see that false implies true is true and false implies false is true. So it doesn't matter what R is. The result will always be T. So we get not P or T. Similarly, we look at the truth table for the disjunction, then anything or T is going to be T. So we get the result without having to substitute in all of the truth values. Finally, let's look at a visual approach. Since Q is given to be True, we simply write a T under the Q. Since the negation of T is F, we put an F under the negation symbol. Since F implies R is T, we put a T under the implication symbol. And since not P or T is T, we finally put a T under the disjunction symbol giving us our result. Let's finish up this section with an exercise. Let P, Q, and R be propositional variables. Draw the truth table for P if and only if Q and not R. Use the truth table from part one to compute the truth value of P if and only if Q and not R when P is true and Q and R are false. And suppose that P and R are both true. Is this enough information to compute the truth value of P if and only if Q and not R? If so, what is that truth value? Now is a good time to pause the video, try this exercise yourself, and then resume it when you're ready to check your answers. Starting with the truth table, once again, there are three propositional variables, so we will need three columns for those propositional variables and two to the third or two times two times two equals eight rows. Okay, let's put down all the truth assignments. And we're gonna need columns for not R, Q and not R, and P if and only if Q and not R. For the first column, not R, we take the opposite truth values in the R column. Then we use the Q and the not R columns to generate Q and not R. And then we use the P column and the Q and not R column to generate the final column, P if and only if Q and not R. Now for number two, we want P to be true and Q and R to be false. That's the fourth row and we see that the result is false or F. And for number three, suppose that P and R are both true. Well, P is true in the first four rows and of those only row one and three have R true. And we see that the result in both cases is F. So yes, we do have enough information to compute the truth value and that truth value is F.